Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to another recent reads. And this recent reads is once again being sponsored by Skillshare. So thank you so much to them for supporting my channel and this series. Today we're going to talk about my 41st read to my 50th read. If you have not seen previous recent reads videos, I will be sure to link that playlist down below so you could hear me talk about all the books I have read so far in 2020. So let's just get right into it. The first book that I want to talk about is a book that I read on audiobook. It was a very quick read and it is Dear E.J. Awele, a feminist manifesto in 15 suggestions by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is a very quick audiobook to listen to that is read superbly by one of my favorite audiobook narrators, January Lavoie. And this is a non-fiction letter from Chimamanda to her friend E.J. Awele, who is now having a daughter and she asked Chimamanda if she had any advice to raise her daughter as a feminist. So this is basically a nonfiction on how to raise a daughter in a feminist way. It teaches about consent, divorce, marriage, raising a daughter, and the struggles and strifes that come along with it, along with the double standards that one must push against. But I do have to say, like my friend Cece said in her Goodreads review, this is very cis-centric. It's very binary in talking about genders and the male and female roles in society. So I would take these pieces of advice with a grain of salt there were some pieces of advice that I really enjoyed and there were other pieces of advice that I didn't really agree with so I would say take it with a grain of salt. You might get something new out of it or you might not. The next book that I read saved 2020 reading for me because I was going on a really slow pace of reading. I didn't really enjoy all the books that I was picking up and I wanted something to really save this year for me and the book that did that for me was Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibber. I did not read get a life Chloe Brown yet because I was sent this for a review by the publisher so thank you so much to them so I did not get to read get a life Chloe Brown yet but I feel like you could read this romance series out of order because they are companion novels and this follows a woman named Danny Brown and she is busy working on her professional career. She wants to make it big and she's really focused on her professional goals when one day she is working at her university and a fire alarm goes off and her friend Zafir who works at the university as a security officer saves her and someone happens to record it that moment and they post it online and everyone online starts to ship these two characters together. So Zafir thinks, why not roll along with it and pretend they, they are a couple? It mixes fake dating with friends to lovers and I absolutely loved it. It was so witty and funny. There's some serious moments about grief and there's very serious moments about anxiety and it is done so wonderfully and at the forefront of it is a amazing romance that you root for from the beginning to the end of the novel and it just lit up my world and put the biggest smile on my face. If I'm going to tell you to read one romance this year, it would be Take a Hint, Danny Brown, because it was so enjoyable and so wonderful and just made my heart soar. The next book that I read was Tweet Cute by Emma Lord and I was not a fan of this YA contemporary. I'm very picky with YA contemporaries. It has to really blow my mind to have me hooked and this is a You've Got Mail retelling between these two characters who go to the same high school but they are not close in high school but they connect online and have a really strong connection online but they don't know who the other person is because it's an anonymous app so nobody shares their identity. But in real life, Pepper and Jack are actually nemesis. Their parents both have businesses that are going against each other publicly online on a sort of Twitter and it kind of goes viral and that's all I really got out of the story. It wasn't like life-changing. It wasn't my new favorite YA contemporary of all time. I think I said it was forgettable on Goodreads because it was lighthearted and fun to read, but it wasn't something that really stuck with me and it wasn't something that was completely original and just amazing to read. Then I read another nonfiction on audiobook and it is So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Aluo. This is a wonderful must-read that I wish 
every single person would pick up. I wish it was taught in high school. The synopsis says it's a current, constructive, and actionable exploration of today's racial landscape, offering straightforward clarity to readers of all races who need to contribute to the dismantling of the racial divide. So this talks a lot about privilege and recognizing one's own privilege in their life. It also talks about police brutality, intersectionality with feminism, and microaggressions and the Black Lives Matter movement. This was such a wonderful nonfiction because not only is Ijeoma teaching you a bunch of things about the complexities of society, but she also gives some really concrete examples from her own life to really simplify these topics and to help you recognize how you could stand up for others and recognize your own privilege in your everyday life. It's a wonderful eye-opening and just like very necessary book to read that I think everyone should pick up. It's uncomfortable at times because you have to recognize your own privilege and recognize the past mistakes that you've made in the way you've spoken to others and the way you may have hurt others, but it also reminds you that you can change, you can learn, you can educate yourself, and you should be educating yourself and listening to others when they call you out and tell you that you did something wrong, and I think that everyone should pick this up, especially during 2020. Then I read If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha, and this follows four women in Seoul, South Korea, as they live their daily lives. One works in a beauty parlor, one is constantly trying to get surgery to improve her face, one is an artist, and another is a newlywed trying to have a child with her husband. And this really explores the beauty standards of Korea and how toxic it can be. It has these really impossible standards that these women try to reach in very different ways. And slowly, as the story comes together, these four lives converge. And I thought this book was really great. It was a little bit slow moving for me, but the only thing that really held me off from completely loving it was the fact that these women finally converged in like the last chapter. And I'm like, finally, they can talk about their issues and what they've been feeling and what they've been struggling with, but then the book ended. I wish we had more chapters of the four of them interacting together, and I feel like it could have made the novel even stronger, but we didn't have that, so I feel like it fell short for me towards the end because I was hoping for those conversations to happen, but they never did. But either way, it was still a great story talking about the really harsh beauty standards in Korea, and it was eye-opening because I didn't know about all the surgeries that happened and just like the impossible standards that are set on women in South Korea. Before we move on, let me tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a wonderful online learning community full of courses on a array of topics like film, photography, creative writing, productivity, and so much more for anyone looking to develop some skills or try something new. There are so many classes you can take on Skillshare that relates to your interests. If you love writing stories as much as you love reading them, Skillshare offers amazing courses on writing taught by best-selling authors like Roxane Gay, Daniel Jose Older, Gail Foreman, Sabah Tahir, and so many more. If you are interested in trying out Skillshare, the first thousand of you to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. New classes are always being added to their site, and there is always something new to learn, so if you want to continue your membership, it will only be $10 a month. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring me yet again, and now, back to the recent reads. Then I read three books that were actually featured in a reading blog of mine where I took a week off of social media to read more. And those books were Our Lady of the Nile by Scholastic Mukasonga. And I also read Queenie by Candace Carty Williams and The Angel's Game by Carlos Suriz Zafon. And I spoke at length about these three books, but I will briefly say that Our Lady of the Nile wasn't my complete favorite historical fiction because I think I said in my reading blog that the tension was rising in this novel set right before the Rwandan genocide and right when that action hit the book ended so I felt a little bit disappointed by how the pacing was of the book I feel like the pacing could have been fixed a little bit more to make it much more gripping because I feel like I was gripped only towards the last half of the book and the first half was a little bit slow going so that's how I felt about that but these two books are some of my favorite reads of 2020. Queenie I read on audiobook and had to get a copy for myself because 
I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is a pretty big character study of a woman named Queenie and she lives in the UK and her boyfriend recently broke up with her so she kind of spirals and her mental health really deteriorates and she really has to figure out who she is, who she wants to be, and what does she want out of life. She deals with issues at her workplace, in her relationships, with her friends, with her parents, and it's highly relatable as a 20-something who doesn't have it all together, who feels like her life is incredibly messy, who deals with mental health issues and anxiety and stuff. It was just so utterly relatable in such a raw and really gritty way that isn't pretty. Like, this book isn't a pretty literary fiction. It's a very harrowing, very raw exploration of Queenie's life because she's not a perfect person and she's sometimes mean and she sometimes makes mistakes and she deals with a lot of things in her life that a lot of people can relate to. So I thought this book was phenomenal and I really enjoyed it but I do also have to say that one person contacted me on Instagram and said that she felt uncomfortable as a Jewish person about the Jewish portrayal in this novel so I would keep that in mind because she really raised some concerns and I want to address that as well. And The Angel's Game is the book before The Shadow of the Wind, which is one of my favorite novels of all time. And it follows a man named David Martin and he writes a bunch of pulp fiction novels and he moves into this really weird, really cryptic, really dark and dank mansion in Spain. And he strikes up a deal with a very mysterious man who offers him the deal of a lifetime. And that deal happens to to completely change and upend David's life for the worse. So I just want to read the first sentence of my Goodreads review because I feel like it was pretty well written and I just wanted to share it with you. So my review says, The Angel's Game is like a tea kettle over a fire. It's tension bubbling and brewing before exploding into something you'll never forget. This story took me on a journey and I absolutely spread through it all, wondering what would happen next. While the story wasn't as intriguing as A Shadow of the Wind, it still had the beautiful writing that Zafon always gives to his readers and it still really gripped me. I did not expect to fly through this 500 page book because I don't like long books but I completely sped through it and read it in less than a week and I thought it was just as beautifully written as The Shadow of the Wind, but the plot was very much different, obviously. It has a lot of pulpy elements to it like David's novels and the twists and turns that this novel takes is wild, like things that I would never expect to happen. But I really enjoyed the journey that The Angels Game put me on and I would definitely see myself rereading it. I would definitely see myself rereading Carlos Ruiz Zafon's books all the time because they are just so awe-inspiring in the way that he's able to describe things in such a ma magical and lyrical way. So if you have not read The Shadow of the Wind, I would highly recommend that you do so and then you read The Angels Game because I feel like that order makes more sense to understand the series. While this book is set before The Shadow of the Wind, I feel like it would be better to read it after reading The Shadow of the Wind. I don't know, people might disagree, but that's just how I read it. Then I read a graphic novel and it was the Great Gatsby graphic novel and this was provided to me by the publisher, so thank you so much to them. The Great Gatsby graphic novel, sadly, disappointed me. You would think that I, I loved it, right? I did not enjoy the way that they adapted the writing of The Great Gatsby. I read The Great Gatsby a handful of times, but I feel like the way that they wrote this adaptation was much more pretentious than it had to be because The Great Gatsby is a pretty straightforward classic to read. I wouldn't say the writing style is very difficult to get into, but the writing style of this graphic novel was very hard to get into for me. And I also, as a person who comes from a family of artists, I feel like the art was not expressive enough. It was very muted and the characters' faces were very flat for me. I feel like they didn't express a lot of emotions and it kind of felt like I was just reading about mannequins in a way. You know what I mean? Like how mannequins just have that blank face where you're like, what are you thinking, mannequin? What are you, what are you thinking? That's what I felt like the art style was for me. So like while I enjoy having this adaptation of The Great Gatsby, it did not live up to the vibrance and the intrigue of The Great Gatsby. I feel like the writing style was much more bogged down and I feel like the art style, while the coloring is gorgeous, I feel like 
it was very flat in the way that the characters' expressions were. So that's like the first time I'm like picky about the art style in a graphic novel, but it had to be said. And the last book in this recent reads is a arc that was given unsolicited and I decided to pick it up on a whim because it was relatively short and I had so much fun with it. And it is Say Yes Summer by Lindsay Roth Cooley. And this is a story about a girl who never has any fun during high school. She was like me in high school. I never had any fun. I never went to any parties. I just kind of went to school, got good grades, went home and didn't have any adventures during high school. But she decides to spend her last summer before college saying yes to anything. She goes to parties, she kisses a popular boy in school, she tries new things, and it's just such a wonderful and pure and heartwarming contemporary. This is a contemporary that just brought a smile to my face, but it just made me miss high school in a way that I can't really describe. It made me wish that I did say yes to things while I was in high school, it made me wish that I took the opportunities that were given my way, but I said no to. And if a book can make me miss high school, the worst time in my life, it's a pretty good YA contemporary because that's the thing about YA contemporaries for me. I didn't have a good time in high school, so I don't like reading about high school, but this is set in the summer after she graduates high school. So she still has that like high school feeling because she didn't enter college yet but she also has that independence from high school. So it just really made me miss high school and like the freedom that comes along with that and just like the fun that you can have with friends. And it was just so sweet. It had a lot of cute little moments and it just made me happy. And I think I read it in one sitting because it's a really quick contemporary. It's less than 300 pages. I just had a grand old time with it. So those are the books that I have read recently. I am very behind with creating these recent reads, so I apologize for that because for some reason I just keep on putting off filming these videos. But thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And if you have read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts if you agree with my thoughts or if you disagree with my thoughts. If you want to follow me on Instagram, be sure to do so. I always post about what I'm currently reading so you can get like sneak peeks into my recent reads so that's a wonderful way to support me and another way to support me is to follow this channel or leave a like and leave a comment that always helps me out so i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you in another video bye